Later on, the Warriors get their first chance to put away the Pelicans when they play Game 5 in Oakland. The Dubs have not lost a playoff game at Oracle since Game 7 of the 2016 Finals. New Orleans coach Alvin Gentry says to change that, his guys will have to limit the epic runs the Dubs are known for. So they're, they're a team of runs. You just got to be able to withstand the runs. Close game, close game, and then you're down 15, you know. Up 15, and then, you know, six possessions later, it's a tie game. It's not a team that you want to try to play from behind against. They've got so many different ways of hurting you that you can't take them all away. You just, it's impossible. You can't believe that. Hey, everyone, everyone's already talking about Warriors Rockets, but both teams still have a job to do. And we're not going to sleep on the Pelicans just because the chat is about the Western Finals. This team has plenty of talent to upset us tonight if we don't come prepared and come ready to play. So, game five tonight for the Warriors. You've been on the wrong end of, of one of those epic runs I described a, a moment ago. What, yes. what is it like as a coach or as an opponent to be in the middle of that? Uh, terrifying. It really, <laughs> it really is. Uh, because there's not a lot you can always do. Uh, and what you think is enough just isn't enough with this team because of their floor spacing, their shooting, their great decision making. It happens quickly. Twice in one game. One minute and 27 seconds, 13 to 2 run. Another time later in the quarter, a minute and 14 seconds, an 11 to 3 run. And that's a 25, 26 to, to 6 difference uh, that just changes the game. And it happens in less than three minutes, uh, like Alvin Gentry said. So you have to be able to finish quarters and finish halves against this team. There really is not a possession that you can take off. That's what makes them tough to beat. And plus, there's only so many timeouts you can call to kind of regroup your guys. But they're one of the best team I've seen, player movement and ball movement. And then they have so many guys that can knock down shots from outside, but also a team that's really good at putting the ball on the floor. And they look for each other. They play, as you said earlier, they play by committee. And every player on that, on that court knows his role, what he needs to do in order to help his team out. But when you have guys that are efficient knocking down shots from the outside, it's hard to guard. And... You can't double team anyone because as soon as you double team, you turn your head, right. play gets a layup, Steph gets a layup. These guys are constantly moving, so they have one of the best motion offenses I've ever seen. They also have the not so secret weapon, the, uh, f the lineup formerly known as the lineup of death, <laughs> now, now known as the Hamptons lineup. Steve Kerr started his Hamptons five in game four for the first time. They outscored the Pelicans by 26 when they were on the floor with ridiculously good ratings. Look at those offensive, defensive, and net rating numbers. Why is that group in particular such a headache? Well, what makes it a tough group to guard is they put five ball handlers, multiple ball handlers on the court, and all those guys can make plays for one another, just driving to the basket, looking for each other, and they make the extra pass on offense, which a lot of teams take the first shot they make two or three passes before they make the, uh, the efficient play, but I think what also helps these guys out, they have two snipers that can make three snipers. If you think about Clay Thompson, KD, and Steph, all three of those guys are great at shooting threes, but also I like how they put the ball on the floor if someone is closing out. They're smart enough to put the ball in, draw defense, and kick it out to an open shooter. Yeah, and, and in the NBA, your defense is predicated on the help behind the guy guarding the basketball. And with the Warriors... It's impossible to guard at least three of those guys, sometimes four, one-on-one. -on -one. They're always going to force you to put two on the ball. And because of good decision-making and good timely on-target passing, it's almost impossible to stop them offensively when you have these five guys on the court. But then when you go to the other end, they're just as good defensively, switching everything, right. keeping everything in front. Uh, Steph Curry, we were talking earlier, really an underrated rebounder for a guard. And all five of these guys can rebound, push, and start the break, which makes it hard to get back and get matched up, and they can score in transition also. At, at the end of a lot of nights, you look at the box score, and Andre Iguodala is not necessarily going to jump out at you, but he's kind of what makes this Hamptons five thing work. Exactly. And those are the type of guys you need on championship basketball teams that aren't worried about filling up their stat sheet. They're just trying to fill up their hands with more jewelry because they're willing to make sacrifices, extra passes, less shots for himself and more for his teammates, doing the little things that the star players can't always do because they, they are asked to do so many other things. 
Uh, so Iguodala, finals MVP from before mm -hmm. because of those little things, not just because of big stats. And I think also we can't forget all these guys have high-level IQs. And you touched on it about their passing. When you become a really good team, that means you are delivering accurate passes so your guys can catch and shoot, and they don't have to worry about the ball being outside so they have to bring it back to their pocket. But these guys, the way they play on defense and offense, because on defense they're able to switch a lot you know, because they're long and athletic. Mm -hmm. And then you have guys that want to play defense. Draymond wants to play defense. KD defense, we didn't see early, is much better. Klay Thompson is a lockdown defender. So they know their, they know their roles on defense as well as on offense, but this team works well when everyone touches the ball on offense and defense. They're ready to switch. And what they do a good job of, they communicate on defense. How many closeouts do we see tonight? Whew. It's going to be quite a few. <laughs> well, there are only two games, so it's... Yeah. You have, your choices are zero, one, or two. Ah, man. I, I, I'm, I say two. Two? I think the Warriors get it done, and I think the Rockets get it done. Both the closeout teams are on their home floors. They should finish the series. All right, we'll find out.